I'm here to talk about AMP as a framework, which um, this is, I mean, I've started, a little bit of context, I started giving this talk, well, uh, I started giving this talk um, to consumers, to users of AMP a while back um, because I wanted to try out something new. So far we've been talking about AMP as a distribution format, as uh, something that is targeted towards product managers maybe, or like developers. But what I really tried to focus on was the CTO story. Um, how can AMP, regardless of any platform surfacing and so on, how can it make someone really successful as a CTO, uh, you know, their developer team and so on? Um, first of all, uh, I'm a little hoarse, so uh, apologies. Um, uh, I hope you can all hear me well through the talk. Uh, okay, so I saw this tweet recently from Luke um, saying there are 4 billion active smartphones on Earth and this is the web they're getting. Uh, it's a little bit small, you can't see it. Uh, there's also another reason why you can't see the content because the content is almost hidden on all of those web pages. It's very, very hard to do anything on the mobile web today. Uh, that is uh, mostly the mobile web that is not AMP. Um, and that's really unfortunate. That's really something I would love to solve and I would love all of your help to solve. Um, and this is me using sticky tape. So if I need to use sticky tape, I use about 5% or 1% of the invested time to actually tape something and the rest of the time to find the end of the sticky tape. Um, this is very familiar to when I was uh, a developer full time, <laughs> right? So fighting the front end stack is uh, uh, usually what I ended up doing. <laughs> Um, that's really unfortunate. So uh, no one here sets out and says, well, I want to build a really slow website. That's really what I want to do. No, of course, the website that you wanted to build and the website that you actually did build is often not the same website. Um, and that's really unfortunate. And it's because it's too easy to build a slow website. Um, that's, of course, the entire reason uh, for, for M's existence, or one of the reasons. Okay. Back to the future. Why back to the future? Well, uh, I have brought you something quite experimental or special. Um, and I warn you, because many of the following things have not happened yet, <laughs> or might not ever. So this is a talk from next year's M Contributor Summit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> let's do this. Uh, fun fact. And of course, the emoji didn't load. This is supposed to be a mind-blown emoji. <laughs> AMP was once used only as an additional distribution format. Can you believe that? Isn't that crazy? Yes, people used to build two versions of every page. <laughs> I mean, mind-blown, right? Um, and so this, this used to be called paired AMP, where like you have an AMP page. The problem is it wasn't really part of the decentralized web uh, because the AMP page can link to other pages. But uh, non-AMP pages cannot really link to an AMP page that is paired because they, they link to the canonical page instead. So um, that was a little bit unfortunate. Of course, when you use what we then called AMP first, now it's just AMP, um, as uh, a framework, then of course uh, it's part of the open web, right? So it's part of the decentralized open web. So that means uh, communication between different publishers is also made fast. Everything is made fast. Um, and that didn't used to be the case because we had some issues with uh, like URL history, state management, uh, interactivity sometimes was a bit, little bit too hard when you did some really complex things with mbind. It was uh, not that easy to do sometimes. And uh, also it was difficult to sometimes deal with cache issues, which obviously is not the case anymore. Um, and, uh, and since then, of course, we also made it possible to bring your own backend. So AMP list now comes with data connectors and uh, uses any, you can use any backend data and transform it in real time. Um, you can also use AMP script now with, uh, to write those transformers. So it's very, very simple to use. Um, and AMP script can now drive state, right? So you have script triggers, actions, macros, all you can do, you could write them all in AMP script. Uh, you can control the history push state with AMP script and access sensor and platform APIs within script. How good is that? Uh, it was really unfortunate when we didn't have those. Um, and this all means that we now have accelerated developer workflows. 
Um, of course, this is made possible because of this amazing collaboration of Preact and AMP. Um, and this builds a really nice foundation. Um, it means that Preact can be the foundation and AMP is an accelerator on service on top of it, um, which enables a lot of cool things. This is something we coined AMP as a service in the past because we think that uh, AMP solves a lot of uh, uh, problems that you hopefully as developers shouldn't have to solve. Um, and here they are. These are all the categories of how uh, a CTO becomes a very happy person with AMP. And I'm going to go into each of those a little bit. But first, how about more content and less code? Well, AMP is really a HTML framework. And an HTML framework is different to a JavaScript framework because the abstraction layer is a little bit higher. Um, and this is also one of the reasons why traditionally we haven't seen it in framework comparison uh, charts or, or blog posts and so on. Um, because people don't compare it to JavaScript frameworks. Um, but if you think about the overall space of where frameworks exist and vanilla JS and so on, if you want to build the next Gmail, of course, you will build, uh, maybe you would build it with pure vanilla JavaScript. You have a big enough team that you can pull it off and a big enough user base that it makes sense. Most of the time, people would use a JavaScript library to, to do a lot of these things. But um, you get a lot of flexibility here, but also a lot of what we call uh, foot guns, which means that you can write one line of JavaScript and then break the performance of your page. And then AMP sits, uh, is, is a much higher level abstraction um, at the expense of some flexibility, but also with much less complexity. Uh, and it's because of our component model. The component model is something that you learn once and then uh, apply in many inter interesting ways. And it's much easier to grasp. Um, of course, one of the things that we didn't have back then were things like payments and subscriptions and built-in theming. Uh, so now you can fully monetize AMP pages normally. Um, and uh, an unsolved problem back then was also that, um, like on native with iOS and Android, you didn't have like built-in theming, which was like, oh, I just want to use platform-level theming. Um, now, of course, with AMP, you all have that. Um, OK, so it's also evergreen without redeploy. Um, if you upgrade your legacy framework, then you have to update dependencies via NPM, cry because it broke your site, fix all the things, cross fingers, deploy on a Friday, and then repeat. That's really unfortunate. Uh, with AMP, it's just sitting back and relaxing because it all lives on a CDN. And this was already true a year ago, so uh, luckily, um, <laughs> this, uh, this made people happy for a while. Um, and we are doing this really carefully with end-to-end -end integration tests, automated tests, biphase release cycles to make sure that we don't break the web overnight. Um, and this means that you sort of have a decentralized team of JavaScript engineers working for you to uh, fix, uh, to make your website better every week. OK, importantly, you learn it once, you use it everywhere. First of all, where do you learn it? Well, you learn it on AMP Dev. Um, AMP Dev is, of course, built completely with AMP. Um, and it comes with lots of cool things. It comes with courses, tools, docs, and themes, and use cases, and starter kits. Um, and some of these have existed last year. Some of these uh, are new. <laughs> um, and of course, it, it works completely cross-browser. And AMP works completely cross-browser, so you can use it everywhere. Um, and the beautiful thing is that once you learn one version of AMP, you can use it for all the other AMPs. You can use it to build AMP AR, or AMP Reels, or AMP Neural Nets, or AMP Timelines. You can use it for all the interesting things where AMP gets applied to, which um, is nice, because you learn it once, and then you apply it everywhere you want. OK, and this was made possible also because of Bento AMP. Um, because now you can convert your site gradually uh, with, uh, to AMP and start using AMP components over time. And then all the performance guarantees and so on you get when you fully are on AMP. Um, and so to visualize this, you can now have a sidebar that you use in AMP. Uh, you can have a sidebar that you use in React. And you just reuse the same AMP sidebar everywhere. Um, and that's nice because the AMP sidebar, for instance, accessibility, something we don't talk about a lot. But uh, maybe we should, because if you build your custom sidebar, it's actually quite hard to uh, manage the focus state, um, make sure that it's fully accessible. And M sidebar does a lot of that gr uh, uh, grunt work for you. 
So um, you get a lot of that for free, even on your non-AMP pages this way. OK, guaranteed performance. This is, of course, something that was well known about AMP before, that it solved a performance issue. Um, and that's both runtime performance and load performance. Now, runtime performance was already well known back then that we solved things like resource prioritization, execution management. Um, but now we're solving uh, performance for load time on the origin and beyond with our new microkernel into architecture. Um, and this is really important because uh, you probably all know this scenario. Um, as a developer, if you, uh, if you uh, uh, are told that you uh, can, should put a tag manager or something on your page, you're giving away the keys to your site, right? And then you cry yourselves to sleep ever, ever then, right? Uh, you become a sad Batman. Uh, and of course, you don't want to be sad Batman. So this is why AMP. Um, and this is already, like, we have been doing this for a while. I'm just, this is just a quick recap. We're automatically prioritizing resources in the first viewport, of course. Um, and then AMP auto, auto sandboxes and delays third party ads, embeds and scripts. Uh, so AMP cannot slow down the page. Uh, ads cannot slow down the page. Um, so we used to have this thing called AMP optimizer. Um, this was really necessary to make pages even faster on the origin with AMP before. Um, of course, we're in the future now. And so we now have this new microkernel architecture where it's just five kilobyte synchronous microkernel in the head and includes all JS and CSS to display the page. And then we really do smart asynchronous hydration of components after the fact. So you get a stable layout even without an optimizer. We still have the optimizer due to things like image optimization and uh, art direction, um, machine learn based and so on. But uh, we, get, uh, we get all of that out of the box now. <laughs> OK, um, another thing to talk about is main thread execution. So main thread execution is a big problem. Everything happens on a single thread in, uh, in, uh, on most websites. And everything has to happen on that thread. So scripting, input, layout, paint, components, and so on. Now, that would not be such a big issue if all of those would be good citizens, right? And would like uh, do everything in granular microtasks. That, of course, doesn't happen. Uh, in fact, this happens. So JavaScript blocks the whole main thread, usually on most websites. And then everything else is slowed down, which is, for the longest time, why we didn't support JavaScript in AMP. Um, and of course, you can do these things in theory. So uh, web workers have been around for a long time, but it's so difficult. I mean, you have to send messages from the web worker to the main thread and vice versa. You have to synch synchronize the state. It's so difficult to, to work with them that for the, last, for the longest time, people didn't, didn't know how to do it. And uh, it was just not mainstream compatible. Uh, the good news is that you now get all of that for free with AMP. Um, and we call this, uh, I call this Workerized JS, um, but that's just a made up name. Um, but I really think it's the future of JavaScript. I think it's really amazing. Um, Malta has written a blog post about this a couple years ago. Um, I think he thought that the future might happen sooner than it did happen. But um, I really think that it is the future. I agree with him here. here. And we do this by, yeah, moving, moving script into this AMP script component and executing it in a web worker. Uh, I'm not going to talk too much about it because you learned about it already this morning. Uh, but that's great because you get this uh, web worker um, uh, amazingness without having to deal with any of the synchronization and messaging and so on. And it's also great because you now have the flexibility of um, of a JavaScript framework at hand, uh, but not at the expense of productivity. So you can write JavaScript understanding that it will not slow down the page. That's really important. Right? This is something that, is, that we haven't, have never had, really. And that's, this is why I'm so excited about it. Like, like, it's so, so easy to mess up in the existing world on the main thread, on the main thread with main thread JavaScript. And with this, you will sort of have the best of both worlds. Um, which makes it quite nice to work with. And on that chart that I showed earlier, it actually moves AMP over uh, to gain 
almost all of the flexibility of a typical JavaScript library and still without the complexity overhead, just as I mentioned. OK, then you get free caching and distribution. So AMP pages aren't just web pages. They are ultra-portable, embeddable content units. What does that mean? Well, we do this with a special pre-render mode in AMP, uh, as well as with the combination of AMP caches. Uh, and there used to be issues with this, where it was difficult to do analytics at times, uh, or like cross-session state synchronization and so on. Um, luckily now, we have lots of uh, exciting new web standards in all browsers, <laughs> including Safari. Um, uh, and uh, and uh, yeah, I know, sad. <laughs> um, and so that means we can uh, use signed HTTP exchanges and portals. We can do instant load via a platform-friendly pre-render. Um, and so we get straightforward analytics out of this URLs and platform API access. So uh, you get like all the PWA goodness that you use to, uh, from even just the first hop to a page. OK, uh, finally here, PWA is built in. Uh, how is it built in? Uh, you probably all have seen this uh, spectacular GIF, but I always like it, so I'm going to bring it in again. Um, well, we started building this one-line service worker, uh, I guess, two years ago. <laughs> um, and uh, since then, have uh, done a lot more work in it. So now uh, it does auto-hydration, caches, dehydrated stage in the service worker, uh, supports push notifications offline, and so on. Uh, so it's now a one-line solution for everything that you would do in a service worker with some additional configuration if you want wanted to have. Um, and then we also get this AMP install service worker, which is a little bit of an older component, but it's still really relevant, um, where the user discovers content, stays on an AMP page. Uh, while the user reads the AMP page, the service worker initializes, caches everything, gets everything ready, and once you hop to the next page, uh, you get that instant uh, instant install of sorts to the PWA, which is still a very nice pattern. Uh, and then uh, one work, work stream that we've worked a lot in, uh, in the last couple, couple of months in 2020 um, are effortless navigation transitions. So uh, we made it possible to essentially build normal websites that are not a single page application um, and then uh, AMP uh, automatically create something similar to Turbolinks, where we grab the next page once the user clicks on it, and then um, calculate the delta, diff the delta between those two states, and animate between them. Uh, and this makes, it gives you the look and feel of an SBA without having to build an SBA, without all the additional complexity of maintaining one and dealing with state management and so on. So with AMP, you now have web development like it's 1999, but um, um, with, uh, with all the goodness of today's SBA uh, feel. So native look and feel. OK, back into the present. Whew. I think I went really quick, actually. Um, please help me figure out how to make all of this a reality. <laughs> that would be really cool. Um, you know, I don't know about AMP Neural, but you know, there are some things in here that I really want to happen. I think some things here really should happen. Um, and they're really important to me because uh, they help to save an open, decentralized web. And in the breakout that is uh, coming up after Crystal's talk, which is coming up after me, uh, I would love to have more of a discussion around which of those ideas here made sense, which of them didn't, um, what you would like to see in that story. But really, uh, I would love to see how we can turn things around for the whole web uh, and have everyone build really fast websites. Thank you. <laughs>